In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Padre nuestro misericordioso, santifica y protege siempre a esta familia tuya, por cuya salvación derramó su sangre y resucitó glorioso Jesucristo tu Hijo, el cual vive y reina por los siglos de los siglos. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see, and those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe that we have heard? To whom was the arm of the Lord revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hid their faces, spurned and held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while he thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and the smitten for the sin of the people, a grave, assigned, a grave was assigned to him among the wicked and burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong. Nor had he had spoken any falsehoods, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord will be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in the fullness of days, though his suffering my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty. Because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. my 
spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I command my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I come. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, Lectura de la Carta a los Hebreos Hermanos, Jesús, el Hijo de Dios, es nuestro sumo sacerdote que ha entrado en el cielo. Mantengamos firme la profesión de nuestra fe. En efecto, no tenemos un sumo sacerdote que no sea capaz de compadecerse de nuestros sufrimientos, puesto que Él mismo ha pasado por las mismas pruebas que nosotros, excepto el pecado. Acerquémonos, acerquémonos, por tanto, con plena confianza al trono de la gracia para recibir misericordia, hallar la gracia y obtener ayuda en el momento oportuno. Precisamente por eso, Cristo, durante su vida mortal, ofreció oraciones y súplicas con fuertes voces y lágrimas a aquel que podía liberarlo de la muerte y fue escuchado por su piedad. A pesar de que era el Hijo, aprendió a obedecer padeciendo y llegando a su perfección. Se convirtió en la causa de la salvación eterna para todos los que obedecen. Palabra de Dios. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. 
Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold, and they were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there, keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gathered. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer to the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of the disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we have not handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? 
Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not, Not this one, one Barabbas. Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing you out to him, so that you may know that I have no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourself and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write King of the Jews, but then he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What have I written? I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. 
in order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust a lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage that says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. El miércoles de ceniza, empezamos nuestra jornada de acompañamiento con Jesús. Y por mi, medio de la oración, el ayuno y la caridad, le ofrecimos nuestros sacrificios y nuestro amor. Jamás pensábamos estar en esta situación tan crítica. En vista de ello, nos es más entendible contemplar a Cristo crucificado, porque lo estamos viviendo en carne propia. Hoy, el amor con el cual iniciamos la cuaresma nos une a los sentimientos de María, quien llora la muerte de su hijo. Y nosotros también lloramos la realidad que nos enfrenta con tantos que han perdido sus seres queridos últimamente. Este día, los poderes de la muerte y del pecado prevalecen, aunque nuestra fe 
en la resurrección nos indica que estos poderes no serán victoriosos. Velemos, pues, llenos de amor y esperanza, porque este amor y esta esperanza nos llevará del dolor de la muerte en la cruz a una feliz resurrección. On Ash Wednesday, we began our Lenten walk with Jesus and promised to follow him more closely. Through our prayers, our fasting, and almsgiving, we have offered him our sacrifice, our attentiveness, and our love. Little did we realize what we would be living in such a critical time in which we find ourselves. Given this situation, we can certainly more easily relate to Christ crucified because we are living it in our own flesh. Today, the love with which we began this Lent invites us to Mary's side to share in her sorrow as she cries at the death of her beloved son. We too have cried the reality we are living today, seeing so many who have lost loved ones and are suffering. This day, the powers of sin and death prevail, even though we know that our faith in the resurrection tells us that these powers will not ultimately be victorious. Let us keep watch then, filled with love and with hope, because this love and this hope will take us from suffering and death on the cross to the joy of the resurrection. On this Good Friday, let us offer our petitions to the Lord. En este Viernes Santo, ofrezcamos nuestras peticiones al Señor. Por la Santa Iglesia, por Holy Church, oremos, hermanos, por la Iglesia Santa de Dios, para que el Señor le dé la paz, la mantenga en la unidad, la proteja en toda la tierra, y a todos nos conceda una vida confiada y serena, para la gloria de Dios, Padre Todopoderoso, hincámonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, que en Cristo manifiestas tu gloria a todas las naciones, ve la solicitud por la obra de tu amor, para que la iglesia extendida por todo el mundo persevere con fe inquebrantable en la confesión de tu nombre, por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. For el Papa, for the Pope, let us pray for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord who chose him from the order of bishops may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's Holy Church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, Look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Por todos los ministros y los fieles, for all orders and degrees of the faithful, Oremos también por nuestro obispo Tomás, por todos los obispos, presbíteros y diáconos, y por todos los miembros del pueblo santo de Dios. Incámonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, cuyo Espíritu santifica y gobierna todo el cuerpo de la Iglesia, escucha las súplicas que te dirigimos por todos tus ministros, para que con la ayuda de tu gracia cada uno te sirva fielmente en la vocación a que le has llamado. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. 
Por los catecumenos, por catechumens, let us also pray for our catechumens, that our Lord and God may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Por la unidad de los cristianos, for the unity of Christians, Oremos también por todos aquellos hermanos nuestros que creen en Cristo, para que Dios nuestro Señor asista y congregue en una sola iglesia a cuantos viven de acuerdo con la verdad que han conocido. Inquémonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, que vas reuniendo a tus hijos dispersos y velas por la unidad ya lograda, Mira con amor a toda la gre que sigue a Cristo, para que la integridad de la fe y el vínculo de la caridad congregue en una sola iglesia a los que consagró en un solo bautismo. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. For the Jewish people, for los judíos, let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God first spoke that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Por los que no creen en Cristo, for those who do not believe in Christ, oremos también por los que no creen en Cristo, para que iluminados por el Espíritu Santo, encuentren también ellos en el camino de la salvación. Incámonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, concede a quienes no creen en Cristo que viviendo con sinceridad ante ti, lleguen al conocimiento pleno de la verdad, y a nosotros concédenos también, que progresando en la caridad fraterna y en el deseo de conocerte más, seamos ante el mundo testigos más convincentes de tu amor. Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. For those who do not believe in God, for los que no creen en Dios, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you come to rest, Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Por los gobernantes, for those in public office, Oremos también por los gobernantes de todas las naciones, para que Dios nuestro Señor, según sus designios, les guíe en sus pensamientos y decisiones hacia la paz y libertad de todos los hombres. Incámonos. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, que tienes en tus manos el destino de todos los hombres y los derechos de todos los pueblos, Asiste a los que gobiernan para que por tu gracia se logre en todas las naciones la paz, el desarrollo y la libertad religiosa de todos los hombres. 
Por Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. For those in tribulation, por los atribulados, let us pray, dear beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hungers, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, grant him to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Almighty ever living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the Lord of the cross.
fieles a la recomendación del Salvador y siguiendo su divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Señor, no soy digno de que vengas a mi casa, pero una palabra tuya bastará.
This time we receive the Lord in, in holy and spiritual communion, giving thanks that he has given himself to us in order to bring us to heavenly grace and love. Damos gracias al Señor por haberse entregado por nosotros para darnos el amor y la caridad. Dios Todopoderoso, rico en misericordia, con la gloriosa muerte y resurrección de tu Hijo Jesucristo, no dejes de tu mano la obra que has comenzado en nosotros. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, your Son, preserve in us the works of this mystery so that we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Que tu bendición, Señor, descienda sobre este pueblo que ha celebrado la muerte de tu Hijo con la esperanza de su santa resurrección. May abundant blessings, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord.